After my parents' tragic death, I moved into the mansion they had left me, a sprawling estate valued at $120 million. The house wasn't just a piece of property, it was a part of me, filled with the warmth and memories of my childhood. Every corner of the estate echoed with the laughter of family gatherings, birthdays, and holidays. I had always envisioned it as my sanctuary, and when I inherited it, I thought I would carry on those traditions, making it a home for my own family. My husband, David, seemed equally enthusiastic about the idea at first. We had been married for five years, and though our relationship had its challenges, this house symbolized a new chapter for us, a fresh start where we could build a future together. David was 37, a software developer with a steady job, and the idea of living in a mansion seemed like a dream for both of us. We imagined the life we would create within those walls, decorating the rooms, hosting friends, and one day filling the space with the laughter of children. It felt like everything was falling into place. But I had no idea that this dream would soon become a nightmare. David's family had always been interested in my inheritance, though I didn't see it as an issue at first. His mother, Linda, had made a few comments over the years, innocent questions about the estate, polite but curious inquiries about the will. I shrugged it off, not wanting to believe that anything sinister was behind it. After all, family is family, and I believed that they were happy for us. But what I didn't realize was that their curiosity was slowly morphing into greed. One afternoon, while I was sketching ideas for a new graphic design project, I heard loud voices coming from the front door. I looked up, startled, as Linda barged into the house without knocking. Behind her were my sister-in-law, Emily, and my brother-in-law, Mark. Their faces were hard, their expressions grim. The air in the room suddenly felt thick with tension, and I immediately sensed that something was very wrong. Rachel, we need to talk, Linda said, her voice sharp and commanding. I stood up, confused by their sudden and unannounced arrival. What's going on? I asked cautiously. Without answering, Emily stepped forward, her lips curling into a smug smile as she handed me a stack of papers. You'll want to take a look at these, she said, her tone dripping with satisfaction. My heart pounded as I took the documents from her hands. As my eyes scanned the pages, I felt a wave of nausea wash over me. The papers were fraudulent, a clumsy, blatant attempt to seize ownership of my home. They had crafted a scheme to transfer the estate into David's family's name, and now they were standing in my living room, trying to steal everything from me. What is this? I demanded, my voice trembling with a mix of shock and anger. You can't just take my house. Mark, always the brash one, crossed his arms over his chest and sneered. Oh, but according to these documents, we can. This house belongs to us now. My heart sank. I looked over at David, expecting, no, needing, him to step in, to defend me, to stand by my side. But to my horror, he just stood there, arms folded, his face blank. It was as if he were completely detached from what was happening. He didn't say a word. My stomach twisted in disbelief. David, please, I pleaded, my voice breaking. Do something. Say something. But he remained silent, letting his family trample over me and our life together. It was in that moment, staring at the cold indifference on his face, that I realized how alone I truly was. The man I had loved, the man I thought was my partner, was standing there, watching as his family tried to strip away everything I held dear. Linda stepped closer, her eyes glinting with malice. Rachel, this is for the best, she said, her voice taking on a sickly sweet tone. You don't need the burden of this house. We'll take care of everything. It's too much for you. I felt a surge of anger rise within me. This is my home, I snapped. I'm not leaving. I won't let you take it from me. Her expression darkened, and without warning, she raised her hand and slapped me hard across the face. The force of the blow knocked me back, and I staggered, my cheek stinging with pain. For a moment, I was too stunned to react. The audacity, the violence, it was too much to comprehend. But it wasn't over. Emily and Mark, emboldened by their mother's aggression, began rifling through my belongings, tossing my sketches, my personal items, my memories, out the door like they were trash. You heard mom, Mark said, his voice cold and cruel. Get out. I felt completely powerless, watching as they destroyed everything I had worked for. My life was being torn apart before my eyes, and the man I had married, the man I had trusted, stood there doing nothing. David. I cried, tears of frustration and desperation blurring my vision. Please, help me. But he remained silent, his eyes betraying no emotion. His allegiance was clear, and it wasn't with me. He had already chosen his family over me. Enough. I screamed, my voice shaking with rage and heartbreak. Get out of my house. You have no right to do this. Linda's face twisted into a sneer as she stepped even closer. You think you can keep all this for yourself? She hissed. This house belongs to us now. You're just a guest here. Her words hit me like a punch to the gut. 
A guest in my own home. How had it come to this? The house that was meant to be my safe haven, the place where I planned to build my future, was now a battleground. My heart raced as the reality of the situation sunk in. They weren't just trying to take my house, they were trying to erase me, to strip away everything that made me who I was. David, I whispered, my voice breaking. How can you let this happen? He looked at me then, his expression softening for just a moment. Rachel, maybe we can talk about this later, he said weakly, his voice lacking conviction. Talk about what? I shouted, feeling the weight of his betrayal crash over me. You're standing there, letting them bully me into leaving my home, and you want to talk later? Linda, sensing that she had the upper hand, grabbed my arm. Her grip was tight, and I could feel the malice behind it. Don't make this harder than it needs to be, she growled. Just leave. I jerked my arm away, furious. Don't you dare touch me. I yelled, feeling the anger surge through me once more. I wasn't going to let them take everything from me without a fight. Mark laughed, a cruel sound that echoed in the room. You think you can fight us? You're all alone, Rachel. David is with us? Tears filled my eyes, but I refused to let them fall. I refused to let them see how broken I felt. I'm not alone, I said, my voice steady with newfound determination. I have the law on my side. You can't just take what isn't yours. For the first time, Linda's confidence wavered. She stepped back, her smug demeanor faltering. You'll regret this, she spat, before turning on her heel and marching out the door, followed closely by Emily and Mark. As the door slammed shut, I stood in the wreckage of my once beautiful home. My belongings lay scattered across the floor, and the dreams I had built within these walls felt like they were crumbling but I wasn't defeated. Not yet. I knew that I had to fight, for my house, for my dignity, for my future. The very next day, I picked up the phone and called a lawyer. Hello, I said, my voice strong despite everything that had happened. This is Rachel. I need help with my property. And that was the beginning. The beginning of my fight, not just for my home, but for myself. The decision to seek a restraining order against David's family wasn't just about preventing further harassment, it was about reclaiming control over my life. I had to establish my legal right to the property, a place that had become central not only to my identity but to my sense of safety and belonging. That evening, when I returned home, a thick, suffocating silence greeted me. David sat at the kitchen table, his head cradled in his hands, lost in thought. The sight of him like that made my heart clench, but I had no choice. This conversation needed to happen, even if it broke something between us. I took a deep breath and stepped forward, trying to muster the strength I knew I'd need. David, we need to talk, I said softly, though the gravity of my words made the air between us feel heavy. I've decided to take legal action against your family. His head shot up, his eyes wide with shock. For a long moment, he just stared at me, as though trying to process what I had just said. Rachel, you can't be serious, he finally said, his voice tinged with desperation. If you do this, it'll only make things worse. The frustration that had been bubbling beneath the surface all week suddenly surged forward. Worse. I snapped, my voice sharp with anger. David, they're trying to take my home. Our home. What do you expect me to do, just sit back and let it happen? His face tightened with a mixture of fear and helplessness. You don't understand, he muttered, his voice dropping. My mother, she's not someone you cross lightly. She'll make your life hell? My heart pounded in my chest, each beat loud in my ears. She already has, David. I shouted, unable to keep the emotion from my voice. This is my life, my home. You should be standing with me, not against me. David stood abruptly, pushing back his chair so hard it scraped against the floor. He ran his hands through his hair, pacing back and forth as if the weight of the situation was too much for him to bear. I just. I need time to think, Rachel. You're pushing me away. Those words hit me harder than I expected. Pushing him away? How could he not see that I was fighting to protect everything that mattered to me, including him? The sense of betrayal sank deep into my chest. I don't have time anymore, I said quietly, the strength in my voice cracking. I have to fight for myself now. Without another word, he turned and left the room, leaving me standing alone in the silence. The door clicked shut behind him, and for the first time, I truly understood that I was alone in this battle. But instead of sinking into despair, a flicker of determination ignited inside me. If no one else would fight for me, then I had to do it myself. The following week, I filed for the restraining order. I spent hours preparing my case, going over every detail, every instance of harassment, every moment of fear. This wasn't just about protecting my property, it was about reclaiming my dignity and asserting my right to live without fear. When the court date arrived, I dressed in my best suit, hoping that outward confidence might help me mask the anxiety twisting in my stomach. I needed to project strength, even if inside I was shaking. As I entered the courtroom, my eyes immediately found David sitting with his family. 
The anger on their faces was palpable, their disdain almost suffocating. But I didn't let it shake me. This was my fight, and I had every right to be here. I took my seat and waited for the proceedings to begin, feeling the weight of the moment pressing down on me. When the judge asked me to present my case, I stood up, my heart hammering in my chest. My hands were cold, but I kept my voice steady as I recounted the harassment, the threats, the invasion of my home. I laid out everything, detail by painful detail, refusing to let myself be cowed by the icy glares coming from David's family. When I finished speaking, I glanced at David, hoping for some sign of support, but his face remained stone cold. It hurt, more than I cared to admit, but I turned my focus back to the judge, knowing I couldn't rely on him. The judge's ruling came swiftly. The restraining order was granted, and for the first time in weeks, I felt a wave of relief. I had won. I had stood up for myself, and it felt powerful. But the victory was bittersweet. David's silence throughout the proceedings echoed in my mind, a painful reminder that I was fighting this battle on my own. Leaving the courthouse, I knew this was only the beginning. David's family wouldn't take this defeat lying down, and I had to be ready for what was coming. At home, the tension between David and me became unbearable. He avoided me even more than before, the conflict creating a chasm between us. I often caught him staring out the window, lost in thought, as if trying to find an escape from the situation. His silence hurt, but I couldn't let his indecision weaken my resolve. I had made my choice, and I had to stand by it, even if it meant standing alone. One evening, there was a knock at the door. My heart skipped a beat as I peered through the peephole. David stood on the porch, his clothes rumpled, his face haggard. Something was wrong. I opened the door cautiously. David, what do you want? I asked, trying to keep my voice steady. He stepped inside, glancing around nervously as if he were waiting for someone to jump out at him. We need to talk, he said, his tone serious. I crossed my arms, not in the mood for more excuses. About what? Your family's latest plan to take the house. Rachel, my mom is furious, he said, his voice almost pleading. She said she'll do whatever it takes to get the house back. You don't understand what she's capable of. I felt the familiar frustration rising in my chest. David, this is my home. I'm not going to let them take it from me. You need to decide where you stand, because I won't wait for you to make up your mind. He looked away, his voice barely a whisper. I don't know if I can stand up to them. I don't want to lose my family. The word stung, sharper than I had expected. Then why did you marry me? I demanded, the hurt bubbling to the surface. I thought we were a team. I thought you loved me. He hung his head, clearly torn. I do love you, Rachel. But family is everything to me. Before I could respond, a loud crash from outside shattered the moment. We rushed to the window and saw his family, Linda, Emily, and Mark, on the front lawn, angrily arguing with a group of movers. My heart sank as I realized what was happening. They were trying to move their things into the house, completely disregarding the restraining order. David, they're breaking the law, I said, my voice shaking with a mix of fear and anger. We need to call the police. No, don't do that. David shouted, panic flashing in his eyes. It'll make everything worse. Worse than this. I shot back, incredulous. They're trying to take over my home, David. How can you stand by and let this happen? Ignoring his pleas, I grabbed my phone and dialed 911. My hands were shaking as I explained the situation to the operator. David stood by, torn between his loyalty to me and his fear of his family. But I was done waiting for him to choose. This was my fight now. When the police arrived, I felt a surge of empowerment. For the first time, I was actively taking control of the situation. The officers assessed the scene quickly, and when I presented them with the restraining order, their demeanor shifted. David's family stood on the lawn, defiant and angry, but I wasn't going to back down. Not this time. The officers began escorting his family off the property, and Linda, her face twisted with fury, spat, This isn't over, Rachel. You'll regret this. Her words sent a chill down my spine, but I met her gaze with a cold, unwavering confidence. You've already taken enough from me. This is my home, and you won't take it away. As the police led them away, I felt a wave of relief. I had fought back, and I had won. But as I turned to look at David, still standing silently on the porch, the weight of the situation settled over me. Our relationship had been pushed to the brink, and I didn't know if we could ever come back from this. David looked at me, his face a mix of regret and confusion. I can't believe this happened, he said softly, running a hand through his hair. I never thought my family would go this far. I stepped closer, searching his eyes for any sign that he truly understood. David, I fought for my home because I had to. I can't live in fear of your family anymore. He nodded slowly, his voice filled with regret. I should have stood by you, Rachel. I was just, scared. Scared of what? I asked, my voice softening. Of their anger. 
of losing my family, he admitted, his shoulders slumping under the weight of his words. You're.